This is Health and Society, a podcast series featuring early career researchers from the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine at King's College London with interviewer Nigel Warburton. For further information and more podcasts, go to www.healthandsociety.co.uk. Hello, I'm Nigel Warburton. Joining me today is Teresa Alvarez, a National Council of Science and Technology of Mexico sponsored PhD student in the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine at King's College London. Teresa, we're going to be talking about the obesity paradox. What's that? The obesity paradox is the differences in the relationship between socioeconomic status and obesity between developed and developing countries. But it it means that in developing countries, obesity is linked to individuals from lower socioeconomic groups. In developing countries, it's the other way around. So richer people or individuals from higher socioeconomic status have higher obesity rates. So the obesity paradox is the idea that in wealthier countries, like in the UK or the US, there's a correlation between being slimmer and of higher socioeconomic status, whereas the reverse is true in poorer countries, so that you might find in in a country like Mexico that the people of high economic status are actually the ones that are tending towards obesity. Exactly, and that is because of food availability, of physical activity enrollment, and some magnificent studies have shown that, for example, in the US and in the UK, people from higher socioeconomic status tend to have better diets, buy, for example, more organic food, they have a lot of better supermarkets in their neighborhood, they have gyms, and they're more aware of the health issues related to obesity than in in developing countries. In developing countries, richer individuals or individuals from higher socioeconomic status groups are less aware and they are also in an environment that is full of fast food and they also have less time to enroll in physical activities when compared to lower socioeconomic status groups. Lower socioeconomic status groups from developing countries are still farmers and are actually working in the field so they have a lot of physically demanding jobs when compared to individuals from lower socioeconomic status here. So that's mainly the reason of this paradox. So what we're talking about here is a big generalisation based on large amounts of data. You're not saying that every person who is wealthier is is less prone to obesity. Exactly, exactly. This is a large generalisation and it's not true even like in some subgroups. It has been shown that, for example, even in Mexico, people with very high education levels or or achievements have lower body mass index, that is the index in which we measure obesity. They are slimmer than individuals with middle education and with lower education. So there are many things that influence this relationship in an individual, but this is a generalization. And how does that compare with Japan? I know you've looked at evidence from Japan as a as a contrasting country? Well, the interesting thing about my research is that we don't know many things about Japan, because in Japan, for example, there's only a 3% prevalence of obesity, whereas in Mexico, the US, it's over 30% of the population. So, so in Japan, it's so small that nobody has looked at what happens in Japan. The way that you do your research isn't that you go out and make your own measurements in these countries, is it? I, I have it in a way easier and in a bit in a way a bit harder because it's easy because the data is there. The research councils from many countries in the world make very large surveys of older adults. And in here in England, there's the ELSA dataset, the English Longitudinal Study of Aging. And then in, in Mexico, it's one called the MHAS. And then in the US, it's the HRS. So those are three longitudinal studies of aging that each of them has about data on about 14,000 individuals. So it's a very large data set that is said to be nationally representative. How do you know that you're comparing like with like here? Because presumably they're not asking exactly the same questions in each country, are they? They are. 
that's the great the great thing about this research is that they all agreed to put a, a, to make comparable data sets. So in a way, that's the easy bit because I have the questions. I know which ones are alike. And then the difficult part is that I have to merge all these data set because I'm, I'm doing longitudinal research. So from 2002 to 2015. So I have to merge all of these, the information of these individuals for all these years. And then I have to compare all the four data sets in my study. So the information is there. That's the easy bit. The difficult bit is putting it together. And the most difficult bit is interpreting it accurately because statistical analysis is also about interpretation. Obesity is often linked with, in its extreme cases, disability and, and also with diabetes. What are the sort of relationships that might form in different countries there between those three aspects of Well, of that's, that's the interesting part of, of my study. I am studying how obesity affects disability in older adults and how these trajectories vary from country to country. So even though I may not have a pattern, I may not find a pattern, I am going to compare the influence of all of the contextual factors on this relationship. And that will give us an idea, for example, on how important is socioeconomic status to moderate this relationship in Mexico? Is this moderating effect the same in the UK? Or is it because of you have your, uh, the NHS and you have a welfare system? Is this rela relationship moderated more by all of these contextual factors you have here that are different between countries? You've already talked about the obesity paradox and how it's most manifest, as it were, in Mexico, where there is this sort of sense that the people of higher socioeconomic status tend to be more prone to obesity, the opposite of what you find in, in the US or the UK. Now, are there other factors there? How can you tease out what the causes, what the kind of patterns of, of causes are in this sort of situation? Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, there are studies that actually have shown that there's a difference in, in the diet of, of richer individuals in developing countries. We had a, an, an, I would say, awful nutritional transition very, very fast in Mexico. That's from eating mainly, you know, the produce of the earth and vegetables and beef and, 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 you know, natural things, to eating more processed food after free trade started. So we took the North American diet, and in a matter of 20 years, the, the rates of obesity in Mexico went super high. I mean, we, we weren't as bad as we are now. Obesity was, I think, 8% or something like that. And now it's, it's awful. So it's due to diet also to physical activities. It's, it has been studied that in Mexico we have very few areas where people are able to go and exercise and enroll in physical activities, and Mexicans do not tend to enroll in physical activities as much as in other countries. So obviously that also has a, a, a very big link. No? And here, wealthier individuals are more aware of how they look on, on their fitness, and so they go out and they enroll and they and they you know exercise, as whereas in Mexico, well, this this sense is sometimes not the same, and sometimes people just don't have time. As as well, you may know Mexico is one of the countries in which people work for the most hours of the day, with a very very low wage. So that's a very bad problem for physical activity and for nutrition. You know? People don't have the time to go to their houses and eat healthy food. So what they do is they go and buy the, the, the first thing they can buy on, on the street. And they also don't have time enough to you know, say, oh, I'm going to jog one hour uh, uh, in the morning because the traffic is so bad, at least in the cities. And, and you know, public transport is another problem. So we can't go biking as you do here in London. In Mexico, it's, it's a lot more dangerous. We, we don't have the, the infrastructure to, to do all of that exercise. So I think, obviously, it's, it's, yeah, it's a bad panorama for our country in that sense. Now, to play devil's advocate, you could say that, in some respects, it's a better situation in Mexico. Because if the poorer people have a lower rate of obesity, 
these are the people who've got less access to, to medicine, presumably less access to all kinds of goods. Isn't it natural justice that the people who are poorest have the healthiest physical body types? I, I don't know if it's a if it's a lock or not. I mean, I, I know that, for example, it, it has been studied that in Mexico, older adults are more resilient. And it's probably because of, of these, you know, physically demanding jobs and their survivors of infectious diseases. However, we have a mixed epidemiology. So we have a lot of infectious diseases. And even if those lower income individuals are less prone to obesity related diseases, which we don't know. No? They are also more prone to have infectious diseases and to die of infectious diseases than richer individuals. So I don't think their, their context in that, in that sense is any better. So that, just to get that clear, what you're saying is that in Mexico, there's evidence that the people who survive to adulthood are resilient individuals who have managed to overcome probably some infections and that there's quite a high mortality rate and so that to paint this as a kind of healthy environment for people omits all the people who have died along the way to produce a kind of slim poorer people. In a sense yeah that 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 is true I mean there's a, a evidence that you know for example disability in older adults from Mexico is less prevalent when compared to the US and the UK and it is hypothesized, because no one can prove this, no? that it's because of this resilience that we have to infectious diseases when they were younger. That's fascinating. You're saying that in Mexico, there are relatively fewer people with disability than in the US or the UK. Now, is that because they're measuring the disability differently? Well, in these studies, as, as I was telling you earlier, they try to measure disability with the same scales. There's also a very interesting problem, that is that in Mexico, people tend to be more positive when they answer surveys. So when you are asking them, do you have a problem walking? Pro possibly a, a person with the same disability here would say, yes, I have a problem walking. And a person from Mexico would probably say, no even if they use a crane and, you know, they have a lot of problems walking. So, so even if you use the same measurement, there's a, a difference in the way people answer surveys from country to country that, you know, has to be taken into account in some way. So do you weight your interpretation of the data according to that? We try to control it. Like when you do pathways, you try to control that the same individual answered the same questions many times and that th that data was from that country in order to reduce that bias, but sometimes it's not possible. <laughs> so I'm really interested in what the motivation for this kind of research is. Is it just fascinating to see that there are different patterns of obesity in different parts of the world, or is there some kind of policy implication of the kind of research that you're doing? Well, I would hope for some policy implications, because specifically for Mexico, I think what I'm going to find, which I don't know, uh, is that individuals from lower socioeconomic status despite that their obesity and diabetes rates are less, will have higher rates of disability than richer individuals. And in countries like, for example, the UK, where you have a welfare system, people will probably have you know, higher rates of disability, but will have lower mortality. And what I think is Mexico has to in a way to learn or should adapt some of the policies they have here for physical activity and even of social support that we don't have in order to overcome this disability problem. Because another problem that Mexico will have very soon is even though if our proportion of older adults is not very high now, it's going to be really high in a very short period of time. So we are one of the most fastest aging countries in the world and that is something that all of these studies you know can't control for and it's something that policymakers have have to be aware of because aging so fast and with such high rates of obesity and diabetes something has to be done in order to prevent disability at older ages what i'm trying to do is exactly contribute to that understanding because in order for policymakers to know what to do, it's 
always very useful to have some other countries that have solved the problem or that have adopted the problem in a, in a different ways. And that is what I'm trying to do. Teresa Alvarez, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Health and Society. This podcast series is sponsored by the Educational Fund and produced by Aidan Judd and Ellie Clifford. For further information and more podcasts, go to www.healthandsociety.co.uk.